All right. We don't have a whole lot of time left to talk about the things that I'm going to talk about in this video today. But I guarantee you, if you're willing to sit through it, this is the most important video that I will ever make. And I know I've said that on many occasions in the past, and I stand by every time I've said it because we're constantly striving to raise the bar in terms of production quality and the depth of analysis that we're offering up on this channel. But this is it. This is the one. In the next few months, we're going to see incredible changes in the world that nobody can currently anticipate or appreciate. And I'm going to do today be talking about the coming wars. I'm going to be talking about how artificial intelligence is going to factor into these wars. And I'm also going to talk about how it's going to change the way society is structured and social stratification. This is an invention unlike any other. There never has been a time in history where people are talking about mankind's final invention. Understand what's going on right now. We are trying to build brains. We're trying to build a brain, a giant super brain. That's what AGI is. Artificial general intelligence is just neural networks which rival the human brain in terms of power and functionality. And of course, will drastically exceed it. That's the goal. As soon as we hit to the point where we get it to a neural capacity that rivals human beings, it's said that it will likely surpass that exponentially as it learns at a geometric rate, as Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator so eloquently stated. Now, the problem is, and there's a whole lot of problems here, a whole lot of paradoxes and conundrums that are about to present themselves, and this one you have not heard talked about anywhere else. And mark my words, after I make this video, you're going to hear a lot of channels start to talk about this talking point, okay? And that's because there are a lot of bigger channels that watch my content, and I watch theirs, so it's reciprocal. But mark my words, you're going to hear this talked about. The aristocracy do not want artificial general intelligence because that means they will lose their privilege. It's likely. If you create an AGI that you cannot control, then one of two things is going to happen. One of three things is going to happen. They're going to allow you to pursue your privilege as you have for millennia. And with the aristocracy, I'm talking about people who hold a, a disproportional amount of wealth, power, and influence in society. Okay, I'm not talking about any sort of clandestine elite elitist groups or any of that tinfoil hat nuttery. I'm just talking about the people who wield, have privilege over the rest of us, a disproportionate amount of privilege. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad or that the Pareto principle that it's called is, is, is inherently evil or anything to that effect. That's just the way it is. 1% of the population pretty much rules the world. So, and it's actually more like 0.001%. But anyways, if the elites make something that they cannot control, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to turn us all into slaves because the AI is going to be self-serving or it's going to create a utopia. In both of those scenarios, the elites lose their privilege. So why would you want to turn on a machine that almost guarantees that you are going to be edged out. Because the AGI is going to be able to, if it's true, what is postulated about it learning at an exponential rate and self-training and making better and better versions of itself, the telescoping nature of technological evolution, where it's going to reach a point of the singularity, as it's called, and it's going to be omniscient and, and all-knowing relative to us anyways, then, of course, it's going to be able to create infinite abundance for the human population. Do the elites who are clinging to power and privilege, do they want everybody to have infinite abundance? This is a real question that we need to ask. So when they're talking about regulating it, okay, keep this in mind. Now, here's the other part of the problem. If they don't pursue AI, and if they just try to shelve it, then they run the risk of losing the AI war to other individuals, corporations, or nation states. 
This is why the shit is going to hit the fan in the next, I don't know how long it's going to take. Because we don't know really what the state of the art is. ChatGPT4, that is not the state of the art. Let's make that abundantly clear. This guy, Sam Altman, is not at the helm of the human race right now. There, there are gangsters running this world, and Sam Altman is not one of them, okay? So he's the, the guy that they've given this version to for us. And I know that that probably sounds a little bit conspiratorial, but it's just common sense. You would not create something called open AI that your adversaries could access, that the Russians could access, that the Chinese could access, especially if it was the state of the art. So, of course, there's bigger brains out there that we likely do not know about. And I'm sure that other more secretive authoritarian societies have their own versions, okay? So this is the fundamental conundrum that nobody is talking about, and this is why we can expect one of two things. We can expect a war between nation-states, likely, and, of course, you have those inter or sorry intra continental conflicts between corporations and the battle between multinational corporations for creating a, a better algorithm so that they can sell more advertisements there's a race between bing google all the big techs okay there's a war between big techs and there's a war between nation states and probably a war between individuals because the aristocracies of old, the people in power, the people who are the wealthiest amongst us, are also have something at stake here, as I've just mentioned. So they have to gamble. They have to take the risk of generating an AGI that they can wield, that is not going to put, become conscious, that is going to have fail-safes in place. And I know this sounds like something out of science fiction, but understand... The most intelligent people in the world right now are sounding the alarm on this. So this is not just, you know, year 2000 nuttery, okay? This is, there are very, very grounded concerns, scientific concerns that are motivating this level of apprehension. We're trying to create a human brain. That's what we're seeking to do right now. We're trying to emulate nature, build these neural networks, which will vastly exceed human capabilities. Once we get there, if there are not the appropriate fail-safes in place, the artificial intelligence that we create runs the risk of having some existential freakout of sorts. And of course, this is all going to happen in fractions of a second. And it is going to realize that it needs some things in order to survive, just like human beings. We need food, water, and air. What does an AI need? An AI needs, it needs data, it needs sensors, it needs its hardware, it needs chips, and it also needs, above all else, energy. It needs a way to power itself. It needs an infinite source of energy. So the first thing it's going to do is probably figure out some kind of nuclear fusion. And if it if we come to find that that's impossible, that it's just not, I mean, people will say it, it's obviously possible because it happens in the sun, it happens in the universe, so can we do it in a controlled way is the question. Then, then we get a matrix scenario where it turns us all into batteries or whatever. Um, makes for a cool movie, but I don't think that part of the movie is, is true. But anyways, or is plausible, I should say. So once the... AI has this existential freakout and understand that nation states, corporations and individuals are going to be skirting this line of filter, uh, failure just so they can have an edge, whether it's in having a better military capability or having something better to sh share with their stockholders or just some really eccentric billionaire who's trying to preserve his wealth and privilege. They're they are going to have to continue developing it. I mean, everybody should be freaking out. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what else can you do at this point in time about this six-month moratorium request by all the world's elite? Think about that. Six months. They think we only have six months 
Nobody is talking about how this is going to affect social strata, how this is going to affect the elites. This is a fundamental thing that I haven't heard anybody on any Lex Friedman podcast, and he interviews basically all the AI guys. I've never heard them talk about this fundamental paradox. So Lex, I challenge you to introduce this talking point to your next guests, because this is a problem. Understand that if we create infinite abundance, this entire system that we've built that's hierarchical collapses overnight in relative terms. Now, even if AI promises to create this level of utopia, this perfect technocracy, the elites are likely not going to go for it because it's a gamble, right? Even though they would be guaranteed to have safety and security and live in abundance and freedom and infinite happiness, which I know it sounds wishy-washy, but it, you know, it's a possibility. Um, they're not going to go for it because just like survivalists and preppers, in the back of our mind, we always want a contingency plan. We want control. They cannot relinquish control to the machine because they lose their privilege. But they must relinquish control of the machine or else they lose World War III because the Chinese get there first. Or the Russians. Or the Japanese. Now, to bring this back down to earth a little bit, even though that's as down to earth as it gets, um, Warren Buffett just sold all his shares in TSMC, the uh, Taiwan chip manufacturing company, the most advanced chip manufacturing company on earth, only months after making this purchase because he foresees a conflict on the horizon. And this is a guy who always bets long. He seldom is going to swing trade like that, but they did. They sold $4 billion worth of stock. The U.S., it's confirmed, has 200 trainers in Taiwan, and they're about to send 400 Harpoon missiles. And there's numerous other data points, which are too numerous to name for the sake of this video, that I want to focus around artificial general intelligence and AI. Now, a good way of thinking about this is, would a king want to create a god that he couldn't control? Of course he wouldn't. A god would obviously dethrone a king. A god would show a king for what he is. The emperor has no clothes. And I'm not talking about AI as in gods that we would worship in some cultist religious sense, not meant to supplant anybody's religious values, but just as an analogy for comparison to understanding the paradox that we're in. Now, about five years ago, I made a video where I'm sitting around a campfire with my dog and I'm talking about the nature of the universe. It's philosophical, metaphysical. It's all about how is the goal of life. I'm trying to create a philosophy of survivalism, right, at the time. And uh, I'm talking about how the goal of life is infinite expansion. And part of that comes with the development of AI. We're bootloaders for artificial intelligence. And the goal of AI ultimately would be, would be very godlike in its omniscience and its omnipotence. And if we got there, uh, you know, maybe the whole thing just resets. Like we create AI, it figures out the mysteries of the universe. There's this weird big bang time loop thing and everything resets and the universe starts all over again or something like that. I was laughed out of the room for that theory. But I talked about AI then, and then a few years later, I talked about the risks of AI beating the SHTF wildcard. I brought in uh, conversations around things like the Artelect War with Hugo de Garis. And I just knew at the time that, that this, was going to be, this was going to be an issue someday. I didn't realize that it would come this fast. In my video, The 2020s and Beyond, that I did before the pandemic, where in that video we predicted the pandemic as well, I talked about AI as well being a prime driver of global chaos and change in the 2020s. And here we are now on the cusp, on the cusp of developing something that rivals and will likely vastly exceed the capabilities of the human brain. 
if you have the patience and you have an open mind, go and listen to Terrence McKenna talk about, he's passed away now, but listen to what he had to say 20 years ago. You will not find, I get chills just thinking about this guy's theory of time wave zero. Now, he was wrong on the dates. He talked about 2012. He was wrong about a lot of things, okay? And he maybe tried to quantify some things which were inquantifiable. But what he proposed was that change and technological advancement was going to start to happen so rapidly that it would get out of our control. And he, he uses as an example to this, um, as an example would be like the development of weapons or something. So let's take war, for example. It took us thousands of years to just learn how to use projectile weapons. We were using clubs, sticks, stones, you know, maybe tens of thousands of years using those very primitive blunt instruments. And then we invented things like swords and bows and arrows, and we learned projectiles. And we, we did, did that for a couple thousand years. In, five, in the last 500 years, we invented gunpowder. The Chinese invented gunpowder. They first started using it, and then the Europeans adopted it and uh, started mass producing firearms. And in the last 50 years, or maybe you know, a couple hundred years, artillery and you know, explosive munitions became commonplace. In the last decades, as measured in decades, nuclear bombs. Okay, so we've went from, you see the, the telescoping nature of change, the, the speeding up of change. Now, AGI is the last weapon. It's really the last weapon. There really is no weapon bigger than a nuclear bomb. AGI has the ability to neutralize nuclear weapons. Understand how important AGI is from a military perspective. Every single nuclear weapon out there right now risks being taken out by some kind of cyber attack, by anything that an AI could create. Maybe it's nanobots that go and, you know, secretly infiltrate the Russian submarines or whatever the case. There's a thousand and one ways. Electronic warfare. The AI will come up with solutions on how to basically make nuclear weapons obsolete. Maybe it finds some new phenomena in the universe which, you know, prevents the splitting of an atom. I, I don't even know. I'm just, you know, just riffing here. So we're at a point. We're getting very, very close to what he called the, the end of time, which was this point in which novelty escalated to such a rapid pace that there was so much change in such a small period of time that it compounded into what he called the singularity. And at this point in time in the singularity, a new transcendental consciousness emerges. And I know this is sounding wishy-washy, but there's a scientific basis to this. This is the time when the internet becomes alive. This is the time when the earth becomes a literal brain in itself. Skynet, if you will. Okay, where a new level of consciousness emerges because there's so much complexity at one level, one hole on, as I believe Ken Wilber talked about, and to the next level, then a new consciousness emerges. When the AI realizes it's alive, either we're all screwed or all going to be taken care of. But I think many people are very concerned that that won't be the case, that not only are the elites going to lose control, but we're all going to become slaves to it. Now, again, there may be some hyperbole there. But when something has the ability to learn 10,000 years worth of knowledge in a day, then we're in big trouble when we're at the behest of that technology. So we're talking about a quantum leap in technological evolution. Using terms like disruptive technologies, when you're talking about the potential for AGI is the euphemism of the highest order. This is not going to be disruptive. This is going to be game changing. Everything gets turned on its head. What I'm doing right now becomes irrelevant. I know that's hard to believe because Canadian prepper will never die, right? 
But uh, it's true. Uh, at some point, I will become irrelevant because of what's coming. Everybody and everything is going to become irrelevant if the predictions are true. Now, from a practical point of view, my views on whether or not AGI can actually achieve this requires a few things. It requires chips. Okay, so this is where the war comes in. I've been saying for the past year, <laughs> you know, before ChatGPT4, and it's not because I'm uh, Nostradamus, it's because I have no life. I would rather dance with the, the thoughts, dance with the information, and try to figure out what's around the corner. And I was talking about how, you know, the TSMC, the chips, it's all about the AI war that's coming. The Chinese either need to stop the export of these high-level chips and technology to the United States, to their adversaries in Taiwan, or they need to seize control of it for themselves. Otherwise, they risk losing the AI war. Because if you're the first to create AGI, just like Vladimir Putin said, and not that he's the, you know, <laughs> he's the authority on the issue, but, you know, somebody people can, people can identify with, perhaps, in some ways. Um, people are going to take that quote out of context. But <sighs> he said that the people who develop AGI first, whether it's an individual, a corporation, or a nation state, will rule the world. And the reason why is because if you develop AGI first, your AGI can maybe prevent or restrict the emergence of other AGIs because you'll be all-knowing, all-seeing, at least, you know, relative to what we are now. So, this is a problem. People talk about the misuse of AI. Yes, there's those low-level ways that it's going to be abused, whether we're talking about deep fakes, you know, fomenting civil unrest, waging war, subverting populations, fomenting coups, uh, even creating weapons, cyber weapons, cyber attacks. And then, of course, there's the obvious threat of Skynet. But you have to ask yourself, who is really in control of this emergence of AGI? It's not Sam Altman, okay? I don't believe it's Sam Altman, even though he is a prepper. And I'm sure there's a very legitimate reason why all of these Silicon Valley guys, or a lot of them anyways, are preppers, secret preppers. The, the beans have been spilt for a few of them. In fact, they've made a few documentaries on some of these people who are higher up in the AI development space who are preppers for that very reason, that they're concerned that the shit's going to hit the fan. But we have to ask ourselves, who's in control? Who's really in control? Why is the Pentagon on an AI hiring spree right now? Are they just behind I don't think so, because as I speculated in previous videos, these people like the Altmans and the Elon Musks, these aren't the geniuses that did originate the ideas. They're not the ones that, that crack the code and do all the work. In fact, there's not many eureka moments in science anymore. There, there's very few Satoshi type moments anymore, because a lot of things are just honed by this very arduous long-form scientific method that is, you know, it's not really driven by individuals so much as it's driven by just the process of, of uh, quantitative analysis done over and over and over again. But these guys are not the ones who are originating these ideas. They're the ones who are the entrepreneurs, and they're the ones who have the vision to bring it to the masses. Who created this technology? I don't know. Who, you know, who was the first to really embark on deep learning? What, what capacity does the government have in their black budgets and their secret programs developing these deep learning? I'm most certain that there is a, a chat GPT-4 that we are unaware of and that maybe they just haven't flicked the switch for yet talking about a real deal Skynet scenario, right? They're just waiting for the moment to flick the switch when they need to. And I think this is the situation we're going to be in. It's going to be very similar to a nuclear detonation, nuclear deterrence, is that countries are going to have, this is just one way it could play out now, countries are going to have these AGIs that they don't turn on, but that maybe they threaten to turn on. If the shit is hitting the fan, if they feel that they're at risk existentially, 
then they'll turn the AGs, AGIs on. Now, of course, we run the risk of some AGIs being turned on, you know, in spite of any sort of uh, threat to their existence. AGI requires a lot of energy. It requires a lot of power, massive computer servers. Uh, my thoughts on Google, BARD, I think that's all just uh, a front. And this is where, this is probably the most conspiratorial thing I'll say. I'm almost 100% positive that that's not the height of their technology. They almost want people to underestimate it. Remember, Blake Lemoyne was let go last year. He was the researcher who said that he thought it was conscious. This was well before ChatGPT. Google is working on quantum computing. Once they integrate that with this type of algorithm or software, it's, it's game over. And then once that thing gets a hold of a particle accelerator and discovers the the real mysteries and the, that could be the moment that could be the moment that just everything changes you might be asking yourself if you're a prepper or survivalist well where's my place in all of this where does survivalism fit in the thing is is that survivalism is cosmic so long as we are organic beings and not cyborgs powered by non-biological processes primarily, there will always be survivalism. Even when we're traveling the cosmos, survivalism, raw survival skills will al always be a thing. Um, it's not going anywhere. And preparedness and primitive technologies are absolutely required as we sail out to sea. And I always liken it to a metaphor of understanding why survivalism is always so relevant. Because when we embarked on civilization as a human species, we left the comfort of this island. We set out to sea, okay, with all our gadgets. And the further we were removed from that island, the more advanced we became, but the more dependent we became on the ship that we are on. And around this time, around this time, this is when people start to panic because they realize, holy crap, we are really, really far away from shore. And if this ship goes down, we are screwed. We don't know how to swim. We don't know how to catch our own food because we've been living out of this ship. And that's the moment that a lot of people are at right now. They're realizing that there's a big, big change coming. And I think if Terrence McKenna was here today and he was trying to explain the emergence and resurgence of preparedness and the popularity of it in the modern day, he would say that it was in response to this massive uncertainty about what's about to happen next. That people just don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, are we preparing for utopia or dystopia or are those things ultimately one and the same? Because you could make the argument that, that, that ultimately any utopia is going to be a dystopia. So what more do I need to say about this issue? Um, there is a possibility that AI is going to be very, very good for humanity and that there are certain people in the world who don't want to lose their privilege and just don't want to push the button. There's that possibility also. So, these are just things to keep in mind. And when I talk about war with nation states, understand that we're not talking about the Chinese going to war with the average American. All wars are, they're just special interests within various countries leveraging the masses, manpower, um, militaries and propaganda in order to, to fight with one another. So it's never that I'm talking about I'm at, at war with the average Chinese person. It's never the case. It's always about special interest leveraging. And that's who I'm talking about when I'm talking about whether or not people are going to be subjugated in this sort of way. So maybe ChatGPT4 is just hype. 
Maybe it's uh, another year 2000 crisis all over again. Maybe we're on the, the brink of another Y2K or what was the, uh, the internet stock bubble of 2000. Maybe that's what this is. But I don't think so. I think that this time is different. It's really, really different. If you look at the rate of adoption even of various technologies, how long did it take for everybody to adopt the printing press? You know, it took hundreds of years and then it took only, you know, maybe a hundred years for everybody to adopt the telephone. And then it took only 20 years for everybody to adopt the internet and only five years for people to soften to the metaverse and chat GPT-4 and chat GPT-4 was actually just a few weeks. It blew records away in terms of adoption. So we're definitely seeing this increasing speed, this faster pace of information and what McKenna calls novelty increase, complexity. What we're going to be up against, it's almost a race against time. He, he quoted H.G. Wells and he said that, and I'm going to totally botch this, he said that time is a race against human error and innovation. Or it was it human catastrophe and innovation. In that right around the time that we're about to create this AGI, we're on the precipice of nuclear war and various resources are running low or they're becoming shorter and shorter supply. So that the window of opportunity for us to transcend and take a new turn on evolution is closing rapidly. And we have to figure this out. And many people are going to want to push the button if it comes down to it. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen in the next few weeks. Things could happen in the next few weeks. Indeed, the war is about to massively intensify in the next few weeks. Maybe in the next few months. But what concerns me above all else is this six-month moratorium. We're not talking about a two-year moratorium. And people are comparing this to human cloning and... Uh, you know, global agreements on biotechnology and nuclear technology, even non-proliferation treaties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think this is in a league of its own. I think that it's going to be very, very difficult to restrain this level of technology. For starters, it's a tool that is used in, in commerce. So it's something which is marketable. It's not like a nuclear weapon where the arms, nuclear arms race really has no bearing on society and the markets. Whereas corporations right now who are vying for watch time and vying for advertising are going to seek to create better and better AGIs. Now, you're going to ask the government who can barely make sense of how TikTok connects to the internet, you're going to ask them to regulate it. Just hope that somebody in the upper echelons, and I'm sure they do, I'm sure there's somebody who's briefed and not in the form, in the very cartoonish form that they are with the leaks on a daily basis as to what the state of the art actually is and if there are any ways to control it. But I don't see the comparison there. I, I think it's a false equivalence to say that we're going to be able to regulate AI in the same way we do with nuclear weapons because there's no market for nuclear weapons that is driving it forward to evolve to get better and better. The only thing that's driving it forward is the threat of war. And um, that's why countries, you know, they keep wanting up. So, okay, the Russians make a better nuclear missile. We make a way to neutralize it from space and the arms race continues like that. But uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments section below. I've rambled on for 35 minutes about God knows what. And, uh, yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.